Lauren's <laughs> skill set is different than my skill set. We operate differently. Um, <laughs> and I came home, we were scheduled to have uh, dinner with people and I came home and Lauren was super stressed and uh, she was stressed because we couldn't find a babysitter and so I'm immediately perturbed because we knew we were doing this and well, why are we now trying to find a babysitter? This has been on the cat, so this is kind of a, um, it's kind of was elevating it. And I said to Lauren, that your stress is offensive to me. <laughs> and, and what I was trying to say is you've created this stress. This isn't, you, you literally created your own stress and now you're stressing out the whole freaking family because you just simply didn't make, and, and so uh, I, I remember that that did not end well for me. And, um, and so I've got that one. I've also got several other things that I have said keep before. Going. You want me to keep this going? Is awesome. um, <laughs> so another, another painful one, uh, besides the one I shared in the last session, which is um, probably um, one commends the, the spirit in which uh, and the godliness that, that the Lord has put in my wife. But um, Lauren had this real intense battle uh, early on in our marriage, and it revolved around um, what she perceived to be God's call on her life to lead out in worship and to encourage the saints in worship and to, um, and she was getting in this rhythm where if she got to lead worship, she would come home and go, oh, I sucked, it wasn't any good, I don't think I'm called to this, but then if she didn't get asked, then it was, oh, I'm sucked, it's good, it's good. And, and so I, I said to her, she was very much bearing her heart to me very much needing me to just speak life and encouragement to her. And, and I said to her, I, I don't see God in any of this. I said, if you're not happy when you do it and you're not happy when you don't, I don't know how you think and believe this is what God's calling you into. And, and so that was, that was pretty awful. That left a mark for a while. Oh, you're enjoying this? No. I'm enjoying this. Okay. <laughs> no. She's <laughs> laughing so as not to cry. Uh, uh, no, we dealt with this. Recovery. Yeah. <laughs> we've been through recovery. Yeah, we've gone through the list. Um, so I think those yeah. were some of my mistakes. I, again, I've tried to not hide the fact that it's funny to me that people love my quick wit because it has such a deadly back end, has such a deadly back blade. And so people think I'm clever and smart and fast-witted and, um, and God bless Lauren, people coming up to all the time, like, you just must laugh all the time at home. <laughs> and some. she laughs some, <laughs> some at home. <laughs> some. Lauren, how about you? Um, I would say uh, my worst mistake is um, caring too much. Yeah, <laughs> caring too much, working too hard. No, um, it would be. I knew this this answer. Um, creating a plan B in my head, which really came out of ironically before Matt had brain cancer. Um, when I was pregnant with our first child, and I don't know, I just had this fear that Matt would die, and I would be left alone, a single mom, and who would take care of me? And so this fear turned into a list of, of men that I thought, okay, they would take care of me, I'd be okay. It wasn't even like, it wasn't sexual, it wasn't romantic, it was a, how will I know I'm secure? And so, that planted a seed that I didn't uproot um, of just kind of having this like second life for me. Like what if, what if it did, this didn't work out and he died? You know, what would this, this other life look like? And that got me in a lot of trouble because what it did is it put up a wall between Matt and me because I could never be 100% all in vulnerable with him because I was like, well, just in case he leaves me, you know, that he dies, I've got a backup plan and I'm not left alone with a child. So it was, it really started out innocently and then it just turned and it grew into this huge monster. And so I would plead for any woman or man that might have that seed of a thought that comes just innocently of, okay, if something were to happen, what would be my backup plan? Instead, think, if something were to happen, God's there. Hmm. He's there, and he will take care of me, and I can trust him, and I don't have to plan, a, I don't have to make a plan B in my mind. I just, I'm grateful for today and what he gives me, and know that he'll be there tomorrow.